Well, hello, 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 everybody. My name is Falconizer. and welcome back to Trails in the Sky, second chapter. So, the last time we... We already finished the first chapter, I guess. I think. Yeah, we are entering the second chapter now. And uh, I already did a couple of the side quests as well, which is nice. Getting a little bit more money and stuff. So, uh, aside from that, I didn't do really a lot. I didn't even grind, so... Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> this is a really nice intro. But anyway, so today we will try to go to the Zeiss. We finally getting back um, to Zeiss and to find Tita again. But before we go, let's just say goodbye to our good old friend Neil and Dorothy. But I don't know where they are. So let's see. Let's just try to see if they are here. Ah, there we go. Hello! Uh... Ah, you guys. I heard from Dorothy that you guys solved our little ghost problem. Yeah, we did, but... Is Dorothy okay? She was yammering on drowsily about what happened. Once she was finished, she... conked right out, so I had to put her to bed. Hmm, I'm afraid we did drag her along with us in the, in the dead of night. Not only that, but we owe her our lives. She's earned a bit of rest. <laughs> a real reporter can go a good week without sleep when he's got a scoop. Oh, yeah, some of the stuff she was talking about sounded wild, but she didn't really explain it all. Mind if I ask you guys a few questions? Sure, go ahead. Estelle gave Neil an outline of their encounter with Blue Blanc and answered his questions. Alright, I think I get it now. Son of a phantom thief, be himself in his liberal and he's one of those Autobotters people. Kinda wish I hadn't heard that. What? Neil, you know about that masked weirdo? Oh, yeah. He's a famous thief who's caused a stir in every major city in the continent. If he wants something, he'll get it. And he always steals, steals things with a big old show. For a phantom, he's got a love of drama, that's for sure. That certainly matches the man we met beneath the schoolhouse, yes. He even admitted his phantom thief B from those cards, so... Like I said though, thievery is one thing, but he's also a lackey of those of the society. Wouldn't think our borders would have use for someone like him. But at the same time, if they do, it's terrifying. Neil, I'm curious. Do you intend to write an article about what happened? Nah. The guild and the Royal Army asking me not to report on anything to do with the society. I'll probably end up writing about someone's ill-intended crime of pleasure or something. With the coup d'etat full foiled, the kingdom is beginning to settle. I do see the wisdom in this. There is little sense in terrifying the populace with news of a dangerous secret society just yet. Yeah, I ain't happy about it, as a reporter. But I guess I see where the government is coming from. Still, if anything else happens, tell me about it, yeah? Of course. Anyway, we're off to we're off for Zeiss. Alright. I've got a draft I need to write up, so I cannot see you off, but want me to wake Dorothy? No, it's okay. She is fast fast asleep. And I'd hate to disturb her. Give her out best when she gets up, okay? Yeah, I mean look at her. She's just she's 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 just in a deep sleep right there, so Will do. Be careful, guys. Alright. See ya. That's... That's nice, you know. Oh. Okay. Hey, you guys. Are you the... Hmm. <sighs> you, you're pressers, right? Yeah? Is something wrong? You look kind of frazzled. Th there's something I'd like you to investigate urgently. Could you come right now? Yeah? Yeah? No problem. Thanks, I owe you. So where should we go? Head to Norma's election office. It's on the top floor of the hotel. Here, I'll show you the way. I mean, it's right there. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so... I'm telling you, I didn't do it. Hurry up and let me go home. I've got work to do. Now, now, calm down. Just bear with us until the bracers arrive. Once their investigation's done, you can leave. 
speak of the devil? See, here they are. Hmm. So. That sure was fast, had you? Yeah, I lucked out and ran into some bracers right away. This is Norman. I'm sure you have seen him on posters around the city. One of the guys running for mayor, I think. I must have right of the bracer killed. I'm sure as Harvey, also a bracer. So let's get to it. What happened? One of our campaigners, Dells, was injured by someone. In other words, it's an assault case. An assault? Well, that's never a nice thing to hear. Is the victim okay? Yes, he is still here. He was unconscious for a bit, but it was, thankfully, nothing serious. Phew, good to hear it. There's nothing good about it. The back of my head still hurts like you wouldn't believe. The back of your head, huh? Were you attacked from behind? Yes, ma'am. Right off the blue, too. I was taking a breather on the balcony and all of a sudden from behind, thud. How vicious. Ouch. Sounds nasty. When did the incident occur? Give us any info that happened before and after. Sure. It happened today, just after lunch. Norman and I were checking out the potential location for a speech by the bridge. Cooper here had just turned up then. When I talked to him, he said he had some important business with Norman. What kind of business? Porter told me to come apologize for that mess on the bridge. It's not like it's all my fault, but I did sort of make it worse. I see. So you came to say sorry for the scuffle. Yes, but Norman was still very busy at the time. We had asked Cooper to wait in the office area. That's when I showed him to this room. I returned to the hotel not too long afterward. I entered the room with Herio, who had been waiting outside the office, and uh, there was Dells, unconscious, on the balcony. And Cooper was right there. Hmm. Standing over him. I'm trying to tell you, why does that make me the criminal? He was already out cold when I reached the balcony. I understand what Cooper's saying, but it's only natural to suspect him, given the circumstances. True, true, true. There was no one in this room except Cooper and Dells. Is that true? After I brought Cooper, I was on watch outside the door. No one entered until Norman got here. No matter how you look at it, look it, that means these two were alone. You're absolutely positive? Yeah, it's true, but it's like I said. When I went out to the balcony, Dells was already on the ground. So let me get this straight. The crime was already committed by the time you came, is that right? Yeah, exactly. Ah, uh, thank ideas. Finally, there's someone who gets it. In that case, I did have to be someone. It did have to be someone who entered the room before Cooper. Dells, do you remember anything? It's possible that someone came in. People go in and out of this office all the time, though. Even if someone had, I wouldn't have thought much of it. Fair enough. It's an election office, so that makes sense. Hmm. At least we have a good idea what's going on. The culprit behind this attack must be one of two, one of two people. Cooper or someone who came before him into this room. Or maybe it's himself. He's trying to stir some commotion, you know? He's trying to... I don't know, try to take down the other contender by doing this and then try to put the blame on them, you know? Never think about that. This is what Duncan Ronba taught me, you know? <laughs> try to thinking outside the box, okay? <laughs> we should be able to narrow it down if we get enough proof. Did we others start questioning? If there's nothing else to be gleaned here, yes. If you gentlemen can think of anything else, please tell me now. Even if it, is, if it seems trivial or unimportant. Alright then, I have one more thing I'd like to add. There was something that occurred to me as I was looking through the room after the incident. Were there, were there signs it, it'd be rummaged around in? Not at all, just the opposite in fact. It actually felt like it was cleaner than before. Huh. Is a serial clean is a serial cleaner on the loose? <laughs> serial <laughs> What the heck? Hmm. One way to interpret it would be as a disguise to hide the fact that the room had been searched. Of course, it appears they went too far, inadvertently arousing suspicion in the process. That's not a bad train of thought. Incidentally, who are you? <laughs> 
I was waiting for that question. I'm a traveling bard, a poetic soul wandering the wilds, a genius mu- Sure, but if nothing's been stolen, then isn't the idea that it's a disguise pretty weak? At this stage, I don't think there's any point in worrying about motive. I agree. <laughs> hey, you've grown even bolder since our last rendezvous, Estelle. Your training at Leloco was most fruitful. You're simply stunning. Uh, Olivier? Just ignore him. Now, if there's nothing else here you can tell us, we should get to questioning. S certainly. She's begun to master how to handle Olivier. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> Good luck with the investigation. We'll come report once we have an answer. Good. We're counting on you to get to the bottom of this. Hmm. Now, how should we go about things? I mean, this hotel is pretty big. It's best if we split into two. Estelle, go with her highness. I'll go with Olivier. We're lucky to have them as assistants, so let's make good use of them. Good point! Ready to kick some investigation, but Chloe? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Assisting companions is only natural for a hunter of love. You sure don't miss a beat, do you? Alright, our first order of business is to gather information on the suspect. If you go around asking about Cooper, something should turn up. Should you get a clearer picture of the criminal, come back here. So, once we found the criminal, go report to you. No problem, let's go see what we can find out. Alright. Hmm. Any suspicious spot? Any suspicious spot around? Uh, as about Cooper. Cooper's face went white as a shit at the moment he, sh he saw us. He was surely dismayed at having been witnessed at the crime scene. Hmm. Uh, I lost consciousness immediately, so I didn't see who hit me. Even catching a glance would have been better than nothing at all. True. Cooper was standing next to Dells, who was lying on the ground. He looked at me and seemed very surprised. He wasn't excited or worked up, but he did appear tremendously shocked. Hmm. I mean, with that testimony, I don't think he did it. I'll say it as many times as you like, I only found Dells. If we'd been fighting, someone would have heard a sound, but no one said anything, did they? Of course, they didn't because I was polite. Please see them on the sofa. Hmm. Let's see the crime scene that happened. It's on the balcony, so uh, there's nothing. Hmm. We'll become a detective now, huh? All right. I'll take it. I'll dig it. Even though I had too much of them detective thingy in Dangan Runba, but hey, one more case, one more mystery case to be solved. I'll take it. I'll take it, so... Uh, okay. Hmm. Maybe there are other witnesses? Uh-huh. Mr. Cooper is a guest who comes here only on very rare occasions. Mostly we have his patronage for work-related gatherings. So, sounds. A sound, you say? Unfortunately, I have no such things. Hmm. Come on. Um... I don't think we can go outside, though, so... Uh, when Cooper came to hotel, I was in the lobby. I don't know, he looked angry, I guess. I thought something might happen. And then, just like uh, something happened. Hmm. The sound? I don't really hear anything. Anger? Yeah, he looked pissed off to me, but it was right after the big man's on the bridge. It's only until he'd be angry. Yeah. I totally get it. So, anything else? You guys know something, haven't you have that? Yeah, actually the case suddenly popped up. Hmm, what do you mean? Well, let's not explain the assault case to Neil. Ah, I see. Huh, you don't seem too interested. Yeah, I don't speak enough to make an article out of it. Well, just in case you solve it, tell me what you got. Yeah, we'll do. Got it. Aww. So good. <laughs> Snore. Alright, got it. So we learned about the sound and the angry now, so we'll see what happened. A sound you say? That would probably be the sound of me getting hit. Heard a hell of a bang in my head, that's for sure. Ouch. <laughs> Is that so? I'm not sure I can really help with that. Okay, let's see the other one. Well, you see Cooper's right. I was standing in front of the door, but it was quiet the whole time in the room. 
If there had been some kind of argument, I'm sure I would have noticed. Was Cooper angry? I don't really look that way, but... Hmm. No, 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 no. Not this one, sounds. As Cooper said, I didn't hear any loud noise either. I wasn't in the lobby at the time, but I'd grown... If grown men were fighting, I'm sure I would have heard something. Well, you were on the lobby, and this room is in, like the, the highest floor, so how can you hurt? Especially, this is a hotel. Usually, the room is really nice. Is really, It has a really soundproofing a goodness. Whatever, I can't even speak. <laughs> but you got the idea. He didn't seem particularly angry when I met him at the bridge. Well, perhaps something happened while he was being led to the hotel. So, sound, remember, there, there's someone who has something, okay. Anger, I was angry? Pfft, that was crazy. If you're gonna say that, that's heavy attitude that was worse than mine, I think. The moment he saw me, he made this real nasty face. Then she arrived by Harry, but then, uh, uh, Him and Dale's had a rival company in the second Norman camp, so I'm sure he will come in and... Ah, okay, so... It's unbelievable they would suspect Harry. In the first place, you're suggesting that he would hurt his co-worker? And what could possibly motivate him to do such thing? Well, like Cooper said, he, you know, he's a rival. He's trying so hard to, he's trying his best, I guess, to be the second in the position of the mayoral candidates, the stuff, so, whatever. And a pleasant position, you say? Well, of course, after a fuss like that, who wouldn't? What does it have to do with the case, okay? There's no way Harry did it, I testified to myself. There's no bad blood between us whatsoever, we even work together. Well, that's where you wrong, buddy, that's where you wrong. Oh, I'm so sorry, I made my head hurt, okay. That's where, where you wrong, buddy, that's that's where, where you that's where you wrong. Wait, this is waste the accent, okay. So I cannot do that, so let's talk to you again. You doubt even Harry? He isn't the kind of person to resort to violence. He is the most loyal man. He would never commit such a criminal act. That's where you're wrong. That's what we learn. Oh. Huh. Are you done questioning in the office? Yes, we are done here. How about you? It's going okay, I guess. I'm still checking out stuff. Keep it up and don't get careless. Leave it to me. That's where you're wrong, you know? It's like sugar coat, you know? Sugar coat inside a medicine. So, not inside the medicine. Uh, well, whatever. You know, you're thinking of Herio? He did kind of look unhappy when he got back to the hotel. That's probably because he was with Cooper, though. Mm. Okay, still nothing. Still nothing. One was peculiar if you pushed them because you might for something you already did. So, anything new? Anything new? Uh, what if we're competing to be number two in the common scam? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a human, aren't I? I'm not allowed to look at one. I'm gonna mention my. Uh, mm, uh, you got a motive. Really? That's where you're wrong, buddy! Nothing sort of idiotic. I just heard you don't listen anymore, of course. Uh, well, that's where you're wrong. That's that's what way. That's what they won't take. That's what the the suspect wants to think. Just to make you believe. There we go. Oh gosh, I cannot even speak. But I think that's it. I mean, there's nothing else. Well, except you. <laughs> How are you, sir? You remember us, right? You landed on the board and the bridge was up. You really say fast then. I want to get in my bag and uh, ride again. Wish I could, I got some work to do. And for getting the case that happened at the hotel. Oh, sounds rough. If I can be out of here, if you don't like, will do, sir. Let's see. Yeah, I know him. Who's that young fella working in the harbor? Like everyone else these days, he's been involved with the election. Uh, sounds. Oh, sound? Hmm. Think about it. I did hear a lot of noise from above. Above from here? You mean the balcony? Probably around there, yeah. It was an impressive sound, like something hard had run into something else with a smack. Can't really, I cannot recall exactly when I heard it though. That's too bad. Still, this is all good stuff, you know. Thanks, sir. Next. Oh, was Cooper that angry? Well, youngsters get worked up so easily these days. Hmm. And just that young merchant fella, yeah? yeah? If he wants to be a merchant, I think he needs to have a bit more oomph to him. You hear me? He's got gullible written all over him. He'll get people ripping him off at every turn if he doesn't ship up. 
Ah, uh, I mean, so, uh, okay, so I think Herio did it. So I think Herio is the killer. So let's just talk to you. The only line to follow, uh, I don't have any here, but. You know the criminal is? So who's your suspect? Herio, I guess. The one who found them, is it? Why would you think that? Instinct, come on. <laughs> Really? Did I mess up? Did I mess this up? I thought I had to put together a reasonable explanation for the crime. This isn't even worth talking about. Go investigate again in greater detail. Yep, understood. Okay. <laughs> My bad. Let's try to investigate some more then. Huh. Anything else? And no, 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 no. I have someone who testified to hearing a loud sound. He apparently heard the sound of something colliding with something else from around the balcony area. Do you have any idea what could have been? Something colliding with something else? Nope, I didn't hear anything like that. Hmm. So we can go... A sound, you say? Oh, probably the sound of me getting hit. Mm -hmm. I right. was standing in front of the door. It's quite a whole time. But there's someone who testified to hearing a big sound. He said it sounded like something smacking into something else on the balcony. Well, I didn't hear it. I can't say for sure that I didn't hear anything of the like while I was here. Because you are the one who did it! So of course you're gonna lie to us. I don't lie, man. Huh. What is it? What's on your mind? If you're hiding something, you should just come out and say it. Trying to hide things will only lead to, lead to a bigger trouble. I'm sorry. You like talking? Yes, actually. I saw him. I saw Herio on the second floor. I knew it! And when was that? Right after lunch. Herio went out with Norman, but... However, shortly after that, Herio came back and ran up to the second floor. Wow, that's kinda important to know. Estelle, I want you to pursue this lead. We'll look around out here after a, a bit longer. Got it! Okay, Herio. I see what you did there. Lunch. After lunch, Norman went to have a look at the site where he was going to give a speech. I had some stuff that I had to do, so I met up with him later. The rest is as I explained before. But Herio, you went to the second floor, didn't you? Mm, excuse me? There's no point in hiding it. We have witnesses. I'm not hiding anything. I just, I just realized I forgot something and went back to the office to pick it up. Was there anyone in the office at that time? Dells was there doing work. I didn't see anyone else. Great, that's plenty. Thanks. Um, don't misunderstand, please. I wasn't trying to hide that I'd got to the second floor. Don't worry, we haven't decided you are the criminal or anything. Just don't forget that this kind of thing only makes you look worse. I look forward to your future assistance, sir. Well, 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 what do we find here? So they are from the Lavatar. That sure is nice, maybe I'll try asking Protos if he can something like that, okay. Uh, lots of day from the Lavantar. I don't want my campaigners getting sick of eating the same food again and again, so I thought I would try something different. Wow, it's nice of you to do that. This is much of part of politics as the campaign itself. <laughs> Indeed it is. I'll admit my nerves have been in edge for on edge for some time now. It hasn't been easy to keep my ass on everything day in and day out. I'm sorry to hear that. Yikes, that does sound pretty rough. Putting that aside, sir, what did you do after lunch? After lunch, Herio and I immediately went to examine the place my speech is to be held at. Herio had some other business to attend to first and met up with me at the side. So you have you left right after lunch and met up with Herio outside. Alright, that's all I need to hear. I'm happy to have helped. Give up the good work, you two. We got this. We got this. We know who did it now. <laughs> yeah, we had the food from Lavandar. Man, it was good. I want to try too, you know? Uh... Okay. Let's see about you. Any testimony? Yeah, we had pile up for lunch. I am on my own in the lobby. It's kind of suffocating to eat in the same room as my dad. Still, you know what? My dad's pretty unfair. He fits us normal, boring stuff, then gets a special pile just for himself. <laughs> Is that so? Was it that different? Yeah, it was way better. The special ones got like a mountain of shrimp. Guess he didn't have much of an appetite though. He left a lot behind. What a waste. Well, whatever. 
about lunch. I want to eat a lavender today. I was been in the habit of going the bell toll. The bell toll. The bell on the Langland Bridge. Remember? It rang when the bridge went up. Oh yeah! Yeah, yeah, it did ring. It always ring at certain times. See, I use it in place of a clock. That's sure convenient. Kinda big to use in the place of a clock though. Hey Estelle, it might be good to ask some people about the bell toll. Huh? Why? They should be able to clearly remember the sound of a bell ringing. It might act as a guidepost for their memory, like with Mr. Murray. Ah, I get it. Nice, Chloe. Very intellectual advice. <laughs> you flatter me. Not sure what you two are giggling about, but glad I was able to help. You sure were. Okay, let's go ask around. Right. Alright, let's see. The Langland Bridge Bell, with citizens of Ruan hear it on daily basis. I'll have you know. Speak on the sound of a bell. Did you remember something? No, you asked about it a second ago, didn't you? That big sound. Not oh, the sound, like something smacking into something, right? Yeah, that thing. Uh, maybe maybe Harry will try to conceal the sound by... Uh, what is it? Waiting the bell to ring, and then when the bell rings, he hits at the same time of the bell. So he kind of disguised the sound with the bell, so... I remember something now, the sound happened as if it were time to the bell. See? At least to my ears. Time to the bell. So basically you heard the sound of the bell at roughly the same time as the, as that big sound? Well, if you want to make it sound all glory, yeah. If if that sound was something caused by the criminal, then someone without an alibi when the bell rang is the criminal. Yeah, we should check out people we suspect. That's why no wonder... Uh, what is it? Not a lot of people heard it. Or any sound. C come on, why would I lie about something like that? I was in the hotel basement, basement, so I didn't notice at all. Alright, cool. The bell, doll, the noon bridge bell? Yes, at the time I was preparing the guest rooms. Once that was finished, I next organized the utensils. Someone had cleaned the plates in the office, so I was able to finish work quickly. The office plates were cleaned? So that means there was someone who went into the office after lunch. Indeed. While I was preparing the guest room, they cleaned up. They cleaned up, it seems. The plates were stacked at the front. Of course, exactly which kind of guess it was. I couldn't say, unfortunately. Aw, oh, too bad. Guess we'll have to ask around ourselves. More leads for us! I mean, the bridge bell ring. I went ahead and we're checking on the speech side together. Harry was there too? Yes, he was already there. Just as the bell was ringing, Cooper showed up. I then asked Harry to show him to the hotel. And you see that it's sure. So then Estelle, there's no connection between the sound Murray and Hurt and Harry. Huh. Yeah, not just Harry, but Cooper seems in the clear too. The sound Murray heard was just after the bell finished ringing, but both men can prove they were with Norman at the time. In other words, whoever made that sound was neither Harry nor Cooper. This virtually eliminates any chance of them being the criminal. Running up, we could have done. Who could have done it? All I know is that they were clean while I was away. So you don't know either, sir. I'm afraid not. I don't know who it was, but I'm worried that I may have left them a terrible impression. Pardon? What do you mean? In truth, I haven't had much of an appetite lately. I left quite a lot of the pala I got for lunch uneaten. It was that Anna, that Anna got me one of the special palace in Sigmund, yet left it virtually untouched. It's embarrassing to think back on how wasteful that was. I see. It must be really stressful to be running in an election. Hmm. Okay. I'm still not too sure. So, okay. So, Herio and Cooper is not the... The... The, the suspect. Hmm. Then the only person I can think of is Dells himself, you know. He try he, he like I said earlier, try to hit himself and try to put the blame to the other side contender, so that Norman can win this campaign. And then the second one will be the guy on the basement. I think that's the son, the Norman's son, I guess. Huh, I don't know. The son of the bridge bell. Now that you mention it, I do think I heard that before I got hit. Hmm, I'm sorry, I, my head feels like a wreck right now. Nothing's too clear. Winding up. Now that you mention it, who did clean up? I'm sorry, I didn't remember. But you were in the office, weren't you? You normally notice if someone came to clean. You're right, I would. Even I think it's odd. 
So, I the belt all, yes. I think it was when I was meeting with Norman by the bridge. Then Cooper showed up and I showed him the way to here. That matches Norman's testimony at least. Cleaning up. Who cleaned up? No idea. For someone who doesn't have done well, I saw it. Where the plates uh, cleaned by the time you got back to the office? Hmm, I don't know. I wasn't exactly paying attention, so I cannot say for sure. Hmm, this is confusing. <laughs> the bridge. Oh, yes, I was running across the bridge in a real hurry. I met Norman right about the same time by the bridge. I see. Let us match Norman's testimony. Cleaning up. You're looking for the person who cleaned up the plates? Look, who cares? I should have proved me innocent. I'm trying, you know, I'm trying. Okay. Hmm. Let's try talk to you then. Original already ring. I was in the basement. I didn't notice at all. How can you not notice? The bell bridge rang. Because it should be a really loud noise to begin with. Not to mention this place is really close to the bridge itself. So. Suspicious. Who cleaned up the dishes to the office? Don't know, I wouldn't go to that much trouble. Maybe killing time in the hotel basement after lunch. Hmm. So what about you? Someone clean up the place for Anna's oh ho ho is already to find someone who's gonna do Anna's nowadays. Hmm. Okay. Uh, still nothing, alright. Uh, when my voice is ebbing, I was written to say this, however, I'm dreadful just standing around. I still say the more beautiful, the floor easier it builds. Hmm. So let's try to talk to you. And the more digging you do, the more you're sure to find something worthwhile. If you're stuck, you might want to go over everything again. If you give up, that's the end. I'm not gonna give up, heck no. It's, it's our life and death, you know? <laughs> it's a life and death murder case. Well, not really murder case. It's some case, I guess. Wait a sec, what was with the weird, weird face? Did I say something weird? No, it's just... Hey, Belden? You said you ate lunch on the first floor, right? Yeah, that's right. What about it? Norman ate on the second floor. How did you know what Norman ate when you were on the first floor? Whoops! Oh, uh, uh that... I saw it afterwards, obvi... Uh... Uh, sorry, my bad. Yeah, actually I heard it from someone else. I don't remember who said it though. Maybe you should investigate that next. That's so obviously suspicious! How dare you, Belton! Yep, it's Belton, alright. <laughs> it's Belton, alright. Okay. Well, I don't think I should talk to you. So, let's. I guess we can talk to you. Okay, let's just finish this, yeah? Sorry, but the... Belden. Raven boy, is it? You have real proof, yes? First, explain the reason you discounted this original suspect. As a solid alibi, Cooper was outside when the sound was heard. Norman's testimony corroborates this. So, we can say for sure it's accurate. If that was the sound of the crime being committed, then there's a very small chance Cooper is a criminal. That's a logical interpretation. And the same thing also absolves Herio of any suspicion. Yeah, it does. Herio met up with Norman, so we're sure. Next, you need to explain the suspect's crime. What kind of proof do you have? It just is? No. Oh. So, st still not, huh? Hmm. Okay, I guess we can try to talk to you again. Mm. Well, maybe we should talk to back to the Norman, I guess. But just in case, let's see. Anger. Cario. Lunch. Something nice to routine. Yep, I do. I'm going to see now. Can I? I had good points. So, did you see anyone at all the time? You know, Anna says the first floor, of course, but the rest was real quiet. Uh, there was no one there. Yeah, that's it, so the basement in first floor, oh! Not my son's uh, stair when I came back, though. Norman's son, Norman's... Oh, you mean Belden? Yeah, that's more than enough. 
No, no, it was nothing. Yep. Me no. It's bad and alright, but just I, I just need to find more clues. So there we have it. Uh huh. Were you really in the basement the whole time? What? What? Why? There's someone who passed through the basement right after the bell rang. According to their testimony, no one was here. Th that cannot be right. I was right here the whole time. So he cannot establish an alibi. Just in case, we should probably ask around about Belden too. All right, let's do it again. So there was Chikazo. Belden. By Belden, do you mean that kid? He wasn't in the basement. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Man, oh man, what do we know? In the bell rang, I was underground, I was in the basement the whole time after lunch. Really? Really? Belden, young Belden? I'm afraid I didn't see him run when the bell rang. I was preparing the guest rooms at the time, you see. Okay. Makes sense. Now, where was Belden and when the bell rang? I couldn't tell you, unfortunately. I was out of time. Okay, so. My son's location with the bell rang would pose a problem. You say I am a cause for suspicion. It's in my part. You'll welcome to confront Bell and question him. Alright. Where was Bell when the bell rang? I don't know, but is he a suspect? Yes! Definitely. Where the bell when the bell rang? Well, the hell am I supposed to know? <laughs> okay. So. I mean, Neil should know, probably, no. Okay, fine. Hmm. Okay, let's just try to talk to Shadows out again. Not a criminal, yes, so I suspect it's Belden, alright. Raven boy, so the reason he has a solid alibi. Uh huh, that's like an invitation. Yeah, he does, it. remain another one, you'll be sure. And what do you have? He has no alibi. The proof is his alibi. A valuable testimony that refutes his alibi. Cooper and Herio have already been cleared as the culprits, so this person remains as the final possibility. Yes, it does look that way by process of elimination. Ultimately though, that's nothing but circumstantial evidence. Do you have any more decisive proof? Uh, he knew about the special pile, huh? Yep, there we go. I don't know if it's, if it's decisive, but something did bother me, and that's the testimony about the special pile, huh? And what's this about? Yeah, so Belda testified that he ate lunch on the first floor, but somehow he saw the pile of Norman ate. He even knew that Norman barely ate it. In other words, he went to the second floor. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Alright, I'm satisfied. In this case, we'll have to call him in and hear what he has to say first. We cannot go straight to an arrest with the proof we have on hand. Uh, okay, got it. There we go. Case solved. Finally. <laughs> Oh god, it takes so long! What? what? Why did you call me? I didn't do anything. Now calm down, nothing's been decided here. If you can help out with the investigation, you can go home right after. H help? Yeah, we just want you to be frank with us. Where did you go after lunch? Like I said, I was in the basement. Just warned you, as long as you keep lying, you're not getting out of here. Uh, You were in the basement the whole time. We already know that. If you didn't do anything wrong, then you should be able to be honest and tell the truth. True? Or is the truth too scary to admit? Good. Fine, I'll talk. Today, after lunch, I, I went to the office. I went to go clean up. Clean up? So the person who returned the plates up to the front was... Yeah, it was me. Everyone seemed busy, so I figured I'd clean up. While I was cleaning up, I thought I'd tidy the office, but... I didn't think that would happen. Huh? H hold on, you're not making sense. You just cleaned up after, right? Why does that have anything to do with the case? I've got an idea. Y yeah, actually, you're the one who did it, so... I see. I understand Belden came to this room to clean, but I'm not sure how that correlates. What does that have to do with the assault on Dells? It has a lot to do with it. Well, let's hear him say it himself. Go on, explain. Y yeah. Well, once I finished cleaning the room, I thought I'd head back. But since I tidy up a lot of stuff, the room was real dusty. I thought I'd open the balcony door to air it out, but my hands were full of plates. I 
I didn't have any choice, so I am kicked the door as uh. <laughs> Oh my god, that's just stupid. <laughs> All this thing just to solve this. Holy cow. <laughs> Still worth it. Still worth it. It makes my brain works more, you know. I'll take it. <laughs> What's the... It's just ridiculous. So I um, kicked the door as hard as I could. Wait. You mean the door... It's exactly what you think. That door is the criminal that knocked out Dells. The door flying open slammed right into the back of your head. In other words, the truth of the case is an unlucky accident. What? So then... I'm innocent, right? Seems like it. Oh man, oh man. Finally free and clear. Still, what a mess. Why did you volunteer this information at the beginning? If you just told us the truth, things wouldn't have gone nearly this far. Uh, I'm sorry. Come on, he's telling the truth now. Give him a break, okay? He had a car to talk about it in the end, so everything worked out. As the victim here, I'd just like to forgive and forget. I, it's already clear that this was all a mis misunderstanding. Of course, I'd like him to be a bit more careful opening doors in the future, if he could. Tells, I'm really sorry. And you too, Cooper. Uh, you almost got turned into a criminal. You don't need to worry about me. I'm in the clear, and that's good enough for me. Well, that settled things. Thank goodness. And that is our report. Racers, I'm sorry for today. It seems we've taken up a great deal of your time over just a big mistake. Indeed! It's like 45 minutes of this weird <laughs> case. No, don't worry about it. This is part of the job too. Well then, pardon us. Thank you guys so much. Really, I'm very sorry. Take care. You didn't give any reward. Are you... I'm sorry? You didn't give us any reward of this? Okay. Okay. Norman. Phew. Well, that's done and over with, finally. I wouldn't have dreamed about it. It would end it like that, though. Truth is always stranger than fiction. However, as your valued assistant, I take great pride in our completion of this most puzzling assignment. You didn't do a damn thing. <laughs> oh, but I really appreciate your help, Chloe. You gave a ton of good advice. It was a big help during the investigation. I'm always happy to help. There's no need to thank me, though, Estelle. Right. I guess you two are our support staff already, aren't you? Indeed. We all have you do what needs to be done. Alright, let's head out. Next up is the Zeiss region. Huh. Okay, so I guess that's kind of like a side mission. But jeez, that took so long to finish. So... What is it? You find a criminal? Yeah, you're going for the truth, but the truth is better than a criminal. What do you mean? Then the crime is actually done for an accident? Huh, I see. Well, that sure would make it for a criminal. Think you can make an article? Nah, probably not. That's no real case here. There's no way to make a paper. Oh, bummer. Well, if you don't take it hard and anything else, come on, contact me. And then you got to you got to go check it out. Okay, okay. Ah, uh, let's see what the reward we get from that. <laughs> I just why, just why? Five and okay. It's actually it's pretty nice, but still not enough. It's not enough. You need more. Need more than that, like seriously, you need way more than that. Like at least 10k of mira or something, or at least 10 BP. Well, I hope, I wish. <laughs> but anyway, let's go to Zeiss and meet Tita. Welcome. You're the group of prisoners heading for Zeiss, yes? Uh huh, that's right. We just got word from John. The guild's already paid for your fares. Would you like to check it now, or it'd, it'd be best to stay here and wait for the ship once we check in? Are you sure we've done everything you wanted to hear in Rwan? Let's check in. Alright, just a little bit of paperwork for your for you to fill out first, if you don't mind. Sure. As our group checked in for their flight. Mm, okay, no problems, it looks like. Feel free to make sure to make use of the port until the next flights arrive. Thanks. Alright, let me get some water first. Oh, I really need that. <laughs> There's a lot of talking. Alright. Here we are. Alrighty then, off we go. 
Yes, let's. Hey, wait a sec. Uh... Oh, hello, guys. Oh, <laughs> the the kids. Well, what are you all doing here? We came to say bye bye. Man, you guys are cold. Just taking off without saying anything to us. You guys are many, many faces. The worst kind. Miss Chloe, why do you have to go? Oh, I'm sorry, everyone. I was going to say goodbye, but we thought you were all out. I get it. They were out coming to ruin. I feel kind of silly now. Hang on, though. That didn't mean Matron Teresa. I'm glad to see we. I'm glad to see we made it in time. Huh. Oh, holy cow! There's a lot. There's all of them. Matron Teresa and even Jill and Hans came. <laughs> well, duh, like we'd miss this. We cut it kind of close though. Thanks to the fact that you wanted to wait till the last second to give it a surprise, Jill. Hey, so all's well that ends well, right? <laughs> Actually, it was Jill who let us know you were leaving. I thought it would be nice if we could see you off. <laughs> and pay no mind to the old man in the corner. Oh, sir. Yeah, Dumbledore, what are you doing? What are you even doing here? Hey, Estelle. I heard that Joshua ran away from home. Oh, um... Mother Teresa told us what happened. I see. I'm sorry, I should have told you all. No, it's okay. Um, we'll pray that Joshua comes home real soon. We'll pray to ADOS every day. Promise. I pray too. He'll come true if we all do. Oh, you guys. <laughs> oh, children, thank you. I'll throw my prayers into the pile too. Estelle, Chloe, you should be careful, okay? You do not. You do need to try your best, but don't overdo it and put yourself in danger. If something happened to you, I don't think he'd ever forgive himself. Jill, Hans, yeah, I remember that. Estelle, please look after Chloe. I know she seems strong, but she seems strong, but she's a little fragile in some ways. M Matron, I'm right here, you know. <laughs> Leave her to me. I kind of suspect she's going to be helping us out more than anything, though. Well, Chloe, use this as a chance to examine yourself and your desires. Don't fret. Simply look for the answer you've been seeking. Yes, I will. I promise. Researchers and students both aspire to the path of knowledge in their own ways. You two have grown immensely in the short amount of time you've been here. Always remember, you never ran out of things to learn. Do not become so overconfident that you forget to learn. If you remember that, there is no obstacle in the world that can defeat you. We yes, remember. Sir. This is the final boarding call for the Cecilia, bound for Zeiss. All remaining passengers should embark now. Uh, whoops. Da -da 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 -da. See you guys, we'll be back, I promise. Everyone, take care. Be careful, guys! Better come back with some great stories and bring Joshua back with you. We will. Oh, it's so, so, it's so good. Feels good. All the people. <laughs> all the people come to see us. Oh, feels so good. Well, except Neil and Dorothy, those freaking two, they didn't see us off. How dare they? <laughs> but it's all good. Airliner Cecilia. All right. Dang, da, 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 da. So let's see, what can we do? Oh, hi, Estelle. Taking a walk around the ship? <laughs> yes, pretty much. Oh, yeah, Chloe. What do you do when you need to get back to Cranzel? Do you need to. Do you get to. Do you get the Royal Guard to fly you there? <laughs> no, of course not. That would be a little obvious. I just use normal flights like anyone else. I usually go back twice a year. Once for New Year's and once for Grandmother's birthday. So you're kind of used to passenger flight, huh? Oh, but what does she do then? Does she fly along at his own pace to the capital? Oh, uh, well... She come here. Huh? How does that even work? <laughs> Whoa! Sorry! <laughs> Sorry, I'm just calling you for a moment. Well, that was a surprise. So she can follow the ship? Cool! Sorry! She can fly level at speed of up to 800 cells per hour. Most airships cruise at around half that. 
So to see, this isn't much faster than an evening stroll. Jeez. Okay, then. <laughs> see. Okay. I see you. Oh, I see. You really are better than the average falcon, aren't you, Sieg? Sorry! Sieg's speed is the reason he's so useful for contacting the Royal Guard. If for some reason I cannot use powered communication, nothing in the country can carry a message faster than Sieg. I thought so. I remember how fast you got in touch with Julia during that thing with the mayor. Alright, well... <laughs> Okay, let's go inside. Try to talk to it, all the people, I guess. Uh, oh, of course! <laughs> of course, Olivia will be here! Estelle, enjoying our flight through the heavens? Look, gaze upon this magnificent azure sky! Uh, but there's nothing better to drink to. Well, uh, the weather is great and the sky is pretty, but... We are um, almost to Zeiss, Olivia. Should you really be drinking? Oh, come now. Don't say that. Somewhere beneath this brilliant sky is my beloved Joshua. The pain he must be feeling on his solitary journey. Such thoughts drive a man to drink, you see. Excuse me, but that is entirely and exclusively my line. <sighs> At least things never got too serious with you around. I guess that's a good thing. Kinda. Maybe. I shall take that take that as a, as the highest praise. I'm relieved, however. Huh? The Black Fang. I had wondered if the words of the Phantom Thief had shaken you. I see I had no cause to be concerned, however. You have a will of iron, Estelle. Uh, oh. <laughs> you were worried about me, Olivier? That's kinda sweet. <laughs> Remember, I am a wandering bard and poet, ever in search of that pinnacle of human affection. Maidens in love shall find no greater ally than I. Um, um, well... Oh, please. I do not need a stuffing today. I promise. I was not teasing you. I actually find your relationship heartwarming. Those new clothes of yours, for example. You purchased them because you wished for Joshua to see you in them, yes? You look excellent in them, I must say. Well, not really, I guess. Because I think Shara brought it, brought these clothes to us, aren't they? Th thanks. What's with the embarrassing compliments all of a sudden? Besides, Shadow got me these clothes as a present. Yep. Joshua... Well, maybe he didn't like them. A little. Hmm. What's with that look? <laughs> Forgive me. That was just more than I expected. Let us leave that topic behind for a while then. Come, Mestel. I shall treat you to a legal cocktail. I guess it is a bit tempting, but we're nearly to Zeiss. Try not to drink the whole bar yourself, Olivier, or you'll pass out and miss our stop. <laughs> Don't you worry. I only lose myself in drink when it is poured by a lovely lady. You realize that's not that's not something to brag about, right? Well, you do lose to Shara, so <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Hello, Estelle. Looking around the ship again? Pretty much. I never rode airships much before now, so it's all kind of new to me still. I remember my first work trips on them and getting all excited too. I'd never ridden an airship before in all my travels. I guess the circus didn't use airships much, huh? Did you guys ride around in orbital powered carriages then? No, no. Most of our carriages were of the single horsepower variety. Mr. Harvey did have an or old orbital drive carriage though. Huh? Okay, now that I think about it, whenever your troupe visited you guys, were in a lot of covered wagons. You remember, you touch your teacher's heart, my dear sweet Estelle. Anyway, airships are still fairly uncommon outside of liberal, as I understand, and as, as I understand it, especially as civilian vehicles. Most other countries prefer orbital-driven ground-based transport. The Erebonians favor orbital driven trains and have a pretty large rail system connecting their major cities. And our Calvarian neighbors use orbital buses. Orbital buses? What kind of vehicle is a bus? A bus is basically a very large orbital carriage. It's a little like an airship. You pay in advance and it'll take you from place to place. It isn't nearly as fast as, as an airship, but the pace is gentler. They are easy to maintain and they're quite pleasant. Huh, neato. I kinda want to ride one now. Speaking of which, Shera, you've been to Calvar, right? I heard you met Zin then. Come on, I gotta hear that story. 
<laughs> There's not that much to it, I'm afraid. I was on an errand for Cassius. He needed me to deliver a document to Calvert's Eastern Quarter. That's where I first met Zin. I see. I gotta admit, I can't imagine what a town full of Easterners would be like. It was, it was exciting, very different culturally and exotic. You should visit, if you get a chance. Hopefully. Uh, okay, still nothing. Oh, thank you for flying with us today. We will be arriving in Zeiss momentarily. Please be aware that there may be turbulence while landing, so we ask that all passengers take their seats. Will do. Yeah, yeah. City of Zeiss. Oh, I miss this music as well. Oh, so good to be back. Oh, <laughs> Tita, I'm coming for you, buddy. I'm coming for you. Dun, 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 dun. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, first off for us should be the guild house here in Zeiss. We need to check in with the with Kilika. Kilika, a rather exotic name for liberal. It sounds Eastern. Well, she is from Eastern, so. What kind of woman is she? I wonder. You never give up, do ya? To put it simply, capable. She is a flawless administrator, and she is also a very accomplished martial artist. She is also quite lovely, but she doesn't have time for, uh, frippery. I would advise caution, my dear Leinheim. <laughs> now my interest is positively piqued. What are we waiting for then? Let us away to... Okay, there's an earthquake. Whoa, is this the fury of Kilika? <laughs> would you give it a rest already? It's an earthquake. Ah, help! The truck is getting to collapse. Run for your lives! Uh, everyone, please calm down. Well, this is probably Professor Russell. The port is designed to endure his high magnitude earthquakes. It can easily handle one this small. Please don't panic. Really? This is small for you guys? Okay. It looks big to me, so. It stopped. Phew, thank I just that's over. Everyone, please come to reception in orderly fashion. Let's not panic. Oh man, it's been a while since I was in an earthquake. He, that was so cool. That's not even cool. It's scary. Well, that was a great way of getting welcome to Zeiss. It wasn't very strong, but attention, world. Please wait until I'm not on scaffolding before you shake again. Love, Estelle. <laughs> I'll send the la that later too. It's rare for us to get an earthquake in Lee Barrel though. Really? Hmm. Chloe's right. Earthquakes are very unusual here. Now we really do need to check in at the cliff house to see what the damage is. Okay, we'll see what happened. Get some drink! Gilika! So there was no serious damage to the central factory. Thank goodness. The city has also remained calm for the most part. I believe there is little to worry about on that front. Yes, I understand. Please, continue to do what you can. Farewell. Your timing is quite serendipitous. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Thank you for coming, Estelle. Sherazad. I imagine you were welcome at the port was quite warm. Or might I say, it's quite... Shaky. <laughs> I tried, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, kinda. It's been a while, Kilika. Hey, uh, nice to meet you. As always, you're two steps ahead of everyone. It's good to see you again, Kilika. Likewise, I'm glad to see you here. And you two would be Olivia Leinheim and Her Highness Princess Claudia, I believe. Or shall I say, Miss Chloe Rins. I'm Kilika. I handle a reception here at the Zeiss branch of the guild. A pleasure to meet you too. No, the pleasure is ours. My word! But your beauty eclipses even when I, what I expected. Madam, allow your humble servant Olivia Lineham to improvise a song t According to John, you've put officially registered as assistants. Yes, shut down! Boom! <laughs> Assistants are free to use the rest area upstairs, just as normal prisoners do. Feel free to use it to relax, or for meetings, or etc. 
thank you. Er, uh, yes, but my impro- If you wish to play your loot, uh, you are welcome to play it upstairs. Do restrain yourself to reasonable limits, however, if you please. <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. Wow, uh, I think Kilika might be even harder on Olivia than Shera. Well, putting aside our repressed musician for now, how is the job situation looking? Are we sh snowed under? We do have some work posted, but nothing urgent at the moment. You're welcome to attend to it as you see fit, but... Mm, huh? What's up, Kilika? You look like you're thinking about something. This is not a normal job, but a request from the guild. In your position as the group investigating the society of Ouroboros, I'd like you to check on something. Okay, check on something? Uh, this is a bit sudden. Um, what do you mean? It's actually what you might expect. I want you to investigate the earthquake that just happened. Investigate the earthquake? You mean, like go around asking about damage? Well, sure, but what does... Well, yes, that as well, however... Three days ago, a similar earthquake occurred at the Wolf, board, Wolf Fort. It lasted about 10 seconds, and the quake was not strong enough to cause any real damage. Two earthquakes, then. That's worrying. There's one particularly odd point, however. The earthquake at the Wolf Fort did not affect the city of Zeiss. Huh. That's, now that is weird. Wait. Huh? Well, that is strange. If I recall the map correctly, the World Fort is not far from the city. An earthquake centered there suddenly should have been felt here in the city to at least a small extent. It was a weak quake, so it is possible we simply did not notice. Still, your friend is right. It does seem unusual. Unnatural. I cannot help but feel a terrible sense of foreboding, foreboding about it. No, I think I get it. Just like with our ghost weird stuff, like this makes me curious too. I guess so. We'll be happy to do what we can, Kilika. We should begin to asking around the city and the fort, I think. Yes, I'll be counting on you. Mr. Murdoch is already gathering information about the quake in the city, however. I expect he'll be thorough, so you don't need to worry about the city. Okay then, so off to the wolf fort. Well, ultimately, this is just my personal suspicion. Remember, it's nothing urgent. Feel free to investigate as you see fit while working on the other jobs. Besides, I believe you have someone to say hello to, yes? Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh, um, yeah. We saw a new gospel too, so we really should go to see Tita and Professor Russell. That seems like a good idea, yes? Let us delay our guild work until we say hello then. Come, let us reunite with Tita with joyful hugs. I'll kindly ask you to not hug anybody. Thanks. <laughs> Still, let's head over to Professor Russell's place. Ah, uh, gee, yeah, but I'm gonna leave this episode in for now. Let me take all of this, so I can do this after this. So let me save over here for now. So there we go. So yeah. Oh, it's so nice to be back to Azize again, and not to mention we're gonna meet Tita and Professor Russell. Ah, screw Professor Russell. Is Tita that's mad at the most, okay? <laughs> so, on the next episode, we meet Tita and we'll try to investigate this earthquake thingy. So, we'll see what happens. Anyway, so yeah, I guess that's it for today. Well, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having fun together with me. Spell lost by the fun. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya!